The beauty of TV over film is that we usually get a lot more time to invest ourselves in a series as characters, both the heroes and the villains. Yet villains don't always end up getting their just desserts. It's easy to lose sight of that fact due to the show downplaying it, or because the villains just quietly slid out of the picture when they knew they'd won. So let's dive in. I'm Adam, this is What Culture, and here are 10 TV villains you didn't realize actually won. Number 10, Stan Valchek, The Wire. It's clear in HBO's seminal crime drama series The Wire that nobody really wins. Life simply goes on, or as the case often might be, it doesn't. As such, definitive happy endings were in desperately short supply when the show came to a close. Yet there is one character whose ultimate success isn't mentioned enough. And that's Stan Valchek, the commander of the Baltimore Police Department's Southeastern District. Nobody in the show proved quite as politically ruthless or hilariously petty as Valchek while managing to emerge unscathed every single time. This is a man who ordered an investigation into corruption at the docks because of a disagreement about a stained glass window, causing a pile of dead bodies in the process. Valchek played human chess better than anyone, and in the series finale even ended up promoted to the role of commissioner for all of his weasel work. Work. While the fates of most other surviving characters were left ambiguous at best, there was no doubt that Valchek would keep bounding upwards for the rest of his career. He came out more enriched and firmly positioned than anyone else in the show. Number 9. Marco Fuentes, Dexter the entire premise of Dexter is that the titular serial killer spends his time targeting and killing the scum of the earth, who he believes deserves to be wiped out. Yet there's one near victim who actually managed to escape justice and has been more or less forgotten about ever since, Marco Fuentes. Marco and his brother Carlos appeared in a single season 5 episode as a pair of serial killers responsible for at least 7 murders. Carlos ends up being killed when the police track them down, at which point Marco flees the scene. While the audience likely expects expects him to end up on Dexter's slab in due course, it just never happens. We never see Marco again, with the fair implication being that he was never brought to justice and was perhaps even able to resume his killings again. While several characters have managed to evade Dexter throughout the series, none have been given as little attention by fans as Marco, enough that it's reasonable to assume most have totally forgotten that he basically came out on top. Dexter has come to an end now, but as far as we know, Marco is still out there, living free. Number 8. Newman, Seinfeld Seinfeld's overarching villain is undeniably the brilliantly detestable Newman, the straight-up evil arch-nemesis of Jerry throughout almost the show's entire nine-season run. Our Newman's arc is paid off quite wonderfully in the series finale, when he makes what would become a prophetic proclamation to Jerry. Quote, Hear me and hear me well. The day will come. Oh yes, mark my words, Seinfeld. Your day of reckoning is coming, when an evil wind will blow through through your little play world and wipe that smug smile off your face. And I'll be there in all my glory watching, watching as it all comes crumbling down. And boy, Newman Shua isn't wrong. Given that the rest of the episode is devoted to Jerry, George, Kramer, and Elaine being put on trial for violating a good Samaritan law. The trial sees the gang's various foes throughout the series brought in to testify against them, while Newman is briefly shown happily eating as the court deliberations take place. Ultimately, the Central Quartet are sent to prison for one year for their actions, or lack thereof, while Jerry's antagonist suffers no comeuppance whatsoever, but quite the opposite, getting to thoroughly relish in their punishment. Number 7. Gaius Baltar, Battlestar Galactica Gaius Baltar surely seemed like he was on a collision course with his just desserts in the series' later seasons. The cowardly narcissist was to blame for the Cylon's genocide against the Twelve Colonies, his libido blinding him to Number Six's duplicity, in turn making him responsible for at least 20 billion deaths. That's quite the ethical bar tab. It really just seemed like a given that Gaius would pay the mortal price for his sins, or, in the very least, get locked away for life at the end of his trial. But alas, Gaius is narrowly found not guilty, and even though the fallout leaves him with few allies, he nevertheless lands on his feet repeatedly in its wake. Gaius becomes a straight-up cult leader and then, in the series finale, finds true peace by settling down and becoming a farmer with Caprica 6, finally embracing the profession held by his father. Gaius had such a brilliant character arc throughout the show that it's easy to downplay just how fortunate the guy was to slip out of the noose, avoid punishment for causing so much death, and then find genuine contentment. Lucky's not even the worst. Number 6. Paul Spector, The Fall 
The fall's antagonist is Paul Spector, a serial killer who was pursued by Detective Stella Gibson throughout the series. Spector is eventually arrested in the show's second season, which ends on a cliffhanger where he's shot, leaving his fate hanging in the balance. The third season reveals that Spector survived, yet in the series finale, upon learning an insanity plea is off the table, he decides to commit suicide by hanging himself in a manner similar to that of his mother's own demise. If this may seem like anything but a victory to Spectre, it's worth considering that the man found a way to evade justice that he desperately deserved. If having Spectre survive his brush with death in season 2 seemed like a clear indication that he'd stay alive to face his real punishment, this basically felt like Spectre getting the last laugh, and sparing everyone touched by his crimes true closure. Number 5. Hannibal Lecter, Hannibal the Hannibal series may have ended with the title character taking a tumble off a cliff with Will Graham, but let's be clear, the man accomplished everything he set out to do beforehand. Plus, they're totally not dead, right? Hannibal's entire goal was to have FBI investigator Graham come to understand him, and this was finally unambiguously achieved in the series finale when Hannibal and Graham teamed up to kill serial killer Francis Dollarhide. This is the moment that crystallized their unhinged, involving bond, and even if you assume that Hannibal died, the man went out completely happy and at peace with his lot in life. But as the post credit scene heavily implies that both men survived, it's an even more decisive victory for Lecter. Emotionally, he achieved everything he set out to do, and seemingly lived to savour it like one of his meals. Number 4. Chris Keller, Oz HBO's legendary prison drama Oz is a show that had very few happy endings on offer, though it did basically hand a victory to psychopathic serial killer Chris Keller. Easy though it is for you to buy into this prison romance with protagonist Tobias Beecher, there's no denying that Keller is an emotionally manipulative abuser. Case in point, when Beecher is paroled in the sixth and final season, a lonely Keller arranges for Beecher to get caught buying drugs, thereby breaking his parole and causing him to get sent back to Oz. The season ends ends with Keller attempting to win back Beecher's favour, and upon realising he won't ever be able to, he commits suicide, throwing himself off a balcony and staging it to frame Beecher for the act. In an ultimate feat of petty revenge, this ensures that Beecher will remain in jail for the foreseeable future, but Keller's posthumous vengeance quest doesn't stop just there. Keller also arranged for anthrax to be delivered to the mailroom, killing everyone in there and resulting in the prison's evacuation, which is implied to be permanent. Number 3. Adelaide Nishka, Firefly now, in total fairness, Firefly's entire planned storytelling trajectory was thrown off by its cancellation after just 14 episodes. But all the same, the sci-fi western series' overarching villain never ended up getting his. We're talking, of course, about Adelaide Nishka, a violent, psychopathic crime boss with a penchant for torturing folks who cause him even the most minor of inconveniences. Though Nishka only appeared in two of the series' episodes, he certainly made a distinct impression, even if his fate was left in infuriatingly unresolved. In the 10th episode, War Stories, Nishka targets Mal and his crew, and though Mal eventually manages to get free and attack Nishka, Nishka manages to slip away when his torturer intervenes. In the end of the episode, when Inara tells Mal, I just wish you'd killed that old bastard, it certainly suggests that Joss Whedon intended to catch up with Nishka later down the line, yet he's never seen again. And when Whedon got the opportunity to make a follow-up movie, Serenity, there wasn't even a passing mention of Nishka's fate. Oh well. As such, it's fair to assume that Nishka's still out there somewhere torturing people for the fun of it, totally unimpeded, while the crew of Serenity ended up losing two of its number, Wash and Buck. Talk about unfair. Number 2. Mandy, 24. Few TV characters have had as much explosive impact in as few episodes as 24's Mandy, who despite appearing in just 7 of the show's 200 plus episodes, effectively managed to outlast even Jack Bauer himself. In the show's first season, Mandy blew up a passenger plane, returned in season 2 to try and assassinate President Palmer, and then reappeared once more at the end of season 4, where she was eventually captured by Bauer. Though this is the last time Mandy has been seen on the show, it's important to remember that in exchange for revealing terrorist Habib Marwan's location, she was granted immunity by President Logan for all of her prior crimes. And so, almost 20 years after we last saw Mandy on screen, she remains a free and at large villain, all while Jack Bauer continues to rot in a Russian prison. At least until Fox hopefully greenlights one more season to resolve Jack's arc. Please give us more Bauer, Fox. Number 1. The Carver, Nip Tuck 
In the early 2000s, there were few TV storylines more gripping than the mystery of Nip Tuck's Carver, a masked serial rapist who mutilates the faces of their victims. The show's third season centered around the investigation into the Carver's identity, culminating in the revelation that the culprit was plastic surgeon Dr. Quinton Costa, working with his sister lover, Kit McGraw. The season ends with Quinton and Kit escaping justice and fleeing to Spain, where it's implied they will continue their rampage. And yet, with Nip Tuck going on for three further increasingly ridiculous seasons, it's easy to forget that the Carver is still at large and presumably still doing his thing when the show comes to an end. Sure, it's tough to believe that Quentin and Kit could just keep attacking people all while their identities are known to the world, yet there's no suggestion at all that they were either caught or gave up their grim side hustle. And there we have it folks, our list of 10 TV villains you didn't realize actually won. But please do let us know down in the comments of your favorite TV villains of all time. And while you're there, make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. If you want to follow me across socials, I am at Strawn87. Come and say hello to me on there. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and the rest of your month. And until next time, take care.